everyone. I am Matt Williamson at Williamson NFL. What's going on? Coming at you from Orlando, Florida with the owners meetings, of course. It's been a good time, great weather, but more importantly, the Steelers made three minor free agent additions. Quez Watkins, wide receiver, Dean Lowry, defensive lineman, Kyle Allen, quarterback. Uh, let's start with Quez Watkins. That's the most exciting of the group. He's fast. He's a deep ball guy. He had a tremendous combine. You know, Andy Weidel's obviously very familiar with him with the Eagles. He's six foot, 193 pounds. So he's not tiny skinny, but he ran a four, three, five in the 40 with great jumps and splits. He's a deep ball guy. He's a really what I think is he. Van Jefferson, Calvin Austin, they're hoping combined to be their number three, number four. I don't even know that any of them are guaranteed to make the team, but, you know, maybe you could even add two to make them your four, number five would be ideal. But they're throwing some things at the fan here. The deep ball stuff obviously correlates with Russell Wilson. Watkins isn't even 26 years old yet, so maybe he could still develop a little. He's more straight line-ish, and he's not great in traffic. He's somewhat of a body catcher, but he didn't have any drops last year, and that that sort of implies that he's not a tough guy. He does have some toughness to him. Um, you would think his skill set would lend itself to be more outside the numbers, and like maybe he projects there in for the Steelers because of his speed, his outside abilities. But between 64 and 71% of his snaps over the last three years have come aligned out of the slot. Now, remember, he played with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, both of whom are tremendous on the outside and are much better players. In his four years in the league, he has 98 catches. You know, this isn't a high-volume player. He's a take-the-top-off guy. You know, he's an intriguing speedster. But it fits in with what they're looking to do with the deep ball stuff. I still think this doesn't move the needle a great deal on wide receiver acquisition, especially through the draft. I mean, there's still maybe up to 18 rookies I looked at that could be difference makers, you know, great additions to an NFL team at the receiver position, three of which Steelers have no chance at at the top of the draft, of course. But I like the Watkins come. Yeah, I think that's a way the best way to look at it is combine Watkins with Austin and Van Jefferson and hope you get a great four out of it, maybe a quality three, but I think both the, all three of those guys are somewhere between a number three and a number four in NFL offenses, which has value. And you got all of them cheap. I mean, I'm sure this deal hasn't been released yet is very inexpensive. Same with the Jefferson deal. So bring a handful of guys to camp See who, you know, a lot of competition for that spot helps you in the draft, doesn't make you have to do things, but they're still looking for their number one, number two type. I mean, their starting receiver to me is not on this roster. And I don't know if any of those guys, again, are guaranteed roster spots. And that that's that's true for Lowry and uh, Allen as well going forward. So I'll tell you about them in a minute. But first of all, Bet Online continues to be your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. Up the minute, odd stats and trends. You can follow your favorite teams, path to the playoffs, with in-game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices. Head to Bet Online today to become part of the team, and remember to use our promo code. It's Believe, capital B, lowercase L E A V. Gets you a fifty percent welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online. The game starts here. Okay, so a little bit later news of the day was Dean Lowry and Kyle Allen. Um, neither really moved the needle to me, to be honest with you. I mean, this Lowry signing reminds me a lot of when they signed Watts a year ago at this time. Watts went on to have a pretty darn good year. And Lowry has some of those type of traits. Again, I don't know that either one of these guys are promised to make the team. 
I don't know if you're done at defensive tackle with a Lowry signing, but you could live with what you have a little bit more than you could have before, especially with Watts leaving. He's almost 30 years old, moves pretty well. He's more of a 6'5", 6'6", just under 300-pound type Cam Hayward more than he is Casey Hampton type. He was a fourth-round pick out LSU not that long ago. Played for the Vikings last year. He's fine. I mean, he's fine. Uh, he's kind of like that Fahoko level guy um, in terms of going to be scrapping to be the sixth or seventh defensive lineman on the on the uh, on the final roster. Maybe he pushes louder milk off the roster or pushes louder milk to be better or something like that. So I don't know if you're still going to draft one or not. I don't think you have to. You'd love to, but it's not a good defensive tackle draft. So that's where you stand. These these moves make sense. I mean, they're not needle movers, but they're roster filler outer moves. And that couldn't be any more true for Kyle Allen. He's a true number three. Of course, he's not going to compete with the top two to be the third quarter or the second quarterback here. Makes me think you probably won't draft one this year because he's a veteran that doesn't need many snaps. You want to give those snaps to Fields and Wilson, especially Fields and talking about preseason, training camp, et cetera. Where a rookie, you'd like to get him as much reps as possible. Allen doesn't really need him. Just turned 28. He's thrown the he's thrown 703 attempts in his career. None last year when he was Josh Allen, a much better version of Allen. Uh, back up in Buffalo. Now that's Trubisky's job, of course. It was a while ago, but Kyle Allen did kind of have a big, big break, a big chance in 2019. He played quite a bit for the Panthers. Not well. <laughs> I mean, 17 touchdowns versus 16 interceptions that year. But he's a great definition, too, of a number three that could masquerade somewhat as a number two, and if need be. My hunch is, I've never heard anything bad about him. My hunch is he's good in the quarterback room, smart, doesn't have a lot of overwhelming physical traits, doesn't have any overwhelming physical traits. They could probably move on without him, just like all these signings, but more so even than the other two and not lose a beat. I'm sure he's missing, making very, very little, but maybe he's a good you know, ear sounding board, you know, teammate, et cetera. I know I'm not saying wonderful things about him, but you're going to take three quarterbacks to camp. You're going to take four quarterbacks to camp. Three are going to make the team. Maybe we could say here at the end of March that we know who those three are that are going to make the team, and maybe this makes them think they're not going to bother drafting one. It's fine. Again, it's fine. These aren't earth-shattering moves. I do like the Watkins pickups for all the reasons I mentioned. If any of them have an impact this year, I would think it's him, followed by Lowry. Distant third would be Allen. Um, Lowry is what he is. You know, Watkins might have a little more juice ahead of him going forward. Allen absolutely is what he is. But we'll see. We'll get these guys to camp and maybe some of them light a little fire, you know, and impress some coaches, get a little buzz going. That's how it works. I mean, the, the bottom of the roster filling out process usually isn't real sexy. Kind of just helps you pad things for the, the draft and things of that nature. But it's a valuable part of the whole team building process as well. So that's what I got for you. Over and out. Take care. 